Hi, I'm Francesca Poi and this is Just for Funk. Welcome to episode number 27 of Just for Funk. Today we're going to continue with a topic that is quite similar to what we were talking about two weeks ago. Instead of using the merging of channels as a way to justify nil channels, what we're going to be doing is to answer the question, what is the best way to merge channels? And the solution we gave, if, we, if you have not watched the episode, I definitely recommend watching it, the one from last, well, last episode two weeks ago. Uh, if you have not watched it, we were doing uh, two channels, right? We were merging two channels. And the question is, what if we have more than that? And not really if we have more, like three or four, but what if we have n of them and we want to write a function? Can we write that code? So that's what we're going to be answering today. Does that sound fun? Let's get started. Okay, so as always, I'm going to start with a completely empty file. And let's do our function main and package main. And basically what we want to do is we want to give three or four or five channels and merging into one of them. So I'm going to start by writing the function tab we want to write. So given uh, some channels, which are of type channel of int, we're gonna return a channel of int. And this might look a little bit weird. I don't know if you've ever seen it before. It's a variadic argument. So rather than calling, it's almost like calling it with a slice of channel of integers, but you don't need to save this as a channel of integers. You can just pass all of the values one after the other. Variadic argument, very useful. Makes function calls slightly more beautiful, if you ask me. Uh, okay, so, and for now, let's return nil. Right, so given a bunch of channels, we return one channel. So let's try to write some code to test this before we actually do it. And in order to do that, uh, let me go to the previous episode. We have this as chan that actually returns exactly what I want. So this will allow us to say something like a is as chan of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, let's start from 0. And then b is a stand of the same thing, but adding 1. And then let's add one more just to make sure that, like, to prove that this is not two, but more. Uh, so I'm just going to copy paste this and change all the ones by choose, except this one here, which is at 21. Uh, okay, and then we're going to iterate over the result of merging A, B, and C, and we're just going to print the value. Cool, so now we have something that might work, except that it will not work uh, because we are not doing anything with this, right? So let's start mix, like, let's start adding some uh, code here. As we did before, we have out, uh, which is a channel of integers, and we're gonna return that out, and then we're gonna have a function. This is the one that handles that channel, and that will do more things later, but for now, let's just say that at the end, it closes that channel. Okay, so now if I run this, I should, since I'm returning a channel that is immediately closed, it should just not print anything, but it should work. So let's try it, go run main.go, and Cool, doesn't print anything, that's exactly what we want. Now, this is when it starts to get fun, right? We could do something like last time. So let's see the code from last time. You see this, K, this select statement with case A, case B. How many cases do we need? Well, we need as many cases as channels. Now the problem is that case is something that you write, is static, is part of the code. So you cannot do this uh, with N with the slice of channels. So this is impossible, right? And at the end of the episode, we'll see that this is actually not impossible, but <laughs> let's assume it was impossible. So we cannot just use a select statement. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to be using Go routines because this is Go. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create one channel, which is the channel that we send in the output to, which that's what we're doing already. Right here, that's the channel we're creating. And then we're gonna create one Go routine per input channel that go routine will receive elements from the input channel and write it to the output. Once the input channel closes, the go routine should stop. And once all of the go routines have stopped, we should close out. 
You can play it back if you want to, if that was not clear enough, because that was a pretty good explanation, I think. Anyway, so let's write that code. Okay, so let's write the code for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over all of the channels first. So I'm going to do C range channels. And uh, now what I need to do is for every single one of those channels, I'm going to create a new Go routine. And what that Go routine is going to do is it's going to iterate. So it's going to iterate over all of the values of the channel send the values to C, and then somehow we need to close our channel later on. Maybe let's not close it yet. Let's just forget about closing it. We, it will fail, but uh, let's take care about that later on. Okay, so uh, range variable C captured by func literal. Uh, and this is interesting because uh, this is a, na a weird way of saying that this is actually a data race. Why? Because these variables here is going to be rewritten every single iteration. And this go routine is not referring to the variable inside of the chance, it's actually referring to, the, uh, to that local variable. So it's going to be rewritten, so at the end it will be all of the go routines would iterate over the last channel only. So that's bad. So how do you fix it? Well, um, C channel of ints. You can do this and then basically, since you pass in again, now you know that this is not a data race. It's pretty common idiom in Go. Okay, so uh, now that we're doing this, let's see what happens when we run it. So we get 0, 10, 20, 20. So we're getting all the values from all the elements and then at the end, that's uh, deadlock. Why? Well, because we're not closing the, the channel. But when are we supposed to close it, right? Because if we close it here, we do defer close, what's gonna happen is that we will close it once we're done iterating. So that will be too soon. Let's try it. You see, done. <laughs> so we closed the channel as soon as we were done. So even the go routines that were supposed to send values into the channel didn't have the chance to do it. Uh, otherwise it would, ha it would have panicked. So uh, that, is not, that is too soon. So when do we do it? Well, we need to wait for all of the go routines to be done. And the way to do that is with a wake group. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a wake group, var wake group, and wake group dot add land of chance. This is how many, how many times do we need to wait, right? So now here we're gonna do wake group done which is basically saying, okay, I'm done. One of the go routines is done, right? And then we can do wake group dot wait. That will wait for that wake group to go from n to zero. And now we close the channel. Uh, we close out. Okay, so we're creating one new go routine per channel. We're using that go routine to read from the input channel and send the values into the output. And once we're done, we let the wake group know that there's one less uh, worker or go routine to wait for. And once all of them are done, that's how we wait for it, we close the output channel. So the moment of truth has arrived. Let's try it. All of the elements arrive and at the end it should closed. Done. Cool. So now we have something that works and we can pass as many channels as we want. Is this better than the other one? Uh, well, if you're merging two channels, the other solution will be faster because you're actually not using extra Go routines. Here, you're creating Go routines, you're creating extra channels, so it's a little bit more complicated. But I'd say that in general, I prefer this solution because it is more general, so you can reuse it easier. Okay, so now at the beginning, I said uh, there's no way to do a select statement over n channels. Is that true? Well. It is true that you cannot write it, but the fact that you cannot write it doesn't mean that you cannot run it. And how do you do things without writing code? Well, magic, also known as the reflect package. So how could you do this with merge reflect? So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna pass our channels as before. It's a channel of ints that returns a channel of ints. 
And by the way, if you wanted to uh, do this for as many channels as you want, as many types, uh, you could also use it with reflection. Uh, and I will not be talking about that today because it's a little bit more complicated and I don't want people to think that everything should be done with reflection, just a little bit. Okay, so uh, how do we do it? Well, there's a reflect.select and that reflect.select, what it does is you pass a bunch of select cases and it gives you what case was chosen, the value that was received, and whether the value that was received was okay or not. Let's go and see what is a select case. Direction of the case, select direction, which can be either reading or, uh, or so reading or sending into a channel, the channel itself, and then the value to send if you're sending something. We're not sending anything we're receiving. So I'd say that we can do cases is a slice of reflect dot select, uh, select case. The direction is going to be reflect dot uh, receive direction actually, receive direction. And the channel is going to be actually we don't know yet. So what you're going to do is we're going to iterate over all of the channels and append so cases equals append cases of reflect dot select case and channel will be C. Um, did something weird. What is this complaining about? This complaining that this is not valid. So that is here, that is here, here and here. Okay, now it's complaining about way more of the things, but that's okay. Uh, okay, you cannot receive direction. Const is a type reflect chan there. Cannot use reflect receive direction as type reflect select direction in field value. Why not? This is that chan direction. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see the definition of select case and that is select direction and the select directions is select send and select receive okay so select receive sorry about that and the channel will be uh, reflect value of the channel because you need to pass a value and this is complaining about the fact that this is not correct which indeed is not okay so now that we have the select cases what we're going to do is actually call select so i'm going to do it an infinite loop for now Actually, uh, I'm going to do it for as long as there's cases because what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the cases uh, one by one when the channel closes. And then we're going to return ooh, out, right? So uh, let's, we still need to do the same thing as before where this is actually in a different go function, uh, in a different go routine, sorry. And then we're going to, defer closing the channel. So now what we need to do is, so for every single time we call reflect.select over the cases, we're gonna get uh, the index of the channel that was chosen. We're gonna get the value that was obtained and then a Boolean. So we know that if, if okay is false, it means that we receive from a channel that is closed so we're going to remove it from our cases. So cases should be cases of uh, zero to i, and we're going to append cases of i plus one uh, on dot, 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 so we can actually append that. This is a nice way of removing the, removing just one element out of a, of a whole slice. Okay, so, and we're going to continue because we don't want to send the value onto, into the output. Uh, otherwise, we're going to send uh, v.interface. So we're going to extract the interface from the reflect value because that is a reflect value, right? Well, it is indeed a reflect value. So we get interface and then we know that's going to be an integer. So we can send it like this. And this should work. Uh, let's try it. 
So let's just simply replace merge with merge reflect, run it and hope for the best. That looks pretty good. And at the end we're done. So now we've seen two different ways of solving the same problem. We've seen we can use the merge function here that does not use any reflection. It just uses uh, many go routines, n go routines, one go routine per channel. And this other solution that uses reflection uh, and uses reflection, but only one go routine. So now the question is, which one is faster? And that is for our next episode because we will be talking about benchmarks. And with this, this is the end of the episode. I hope you enjoy it. I'm again in a new place. This time I'm lucky enough to be hosted by Holberton School in San Francisco. So thanks so much to them for giving me free Wi-Fi and water in a room where I can record. As always, keep sending your code reviews. I'm actually doing a couple of them and I will be making videos of them soon. Uh, please tell all of your friends about Just Funk. Subscribe and see you all in two weeks.